Hello everyone. In this video, as the title suggests, I will be talking about and really just giving my views on these two game titles uh, with the information that I have. Uh, first I want to give you a little bit of a backstory uh, that most of you will probably know, but for those who don't, my first PC game was Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Uh, this is where I started PC gaming about 14 years ago. Uh, I played this for some time and then I moved to Call of Duty 1. I played this for a few years and then Call of Duty 2. So for me personally, having developers making games such as these two, uh, going back to old school roots where the games really required skill and aim and game sense and they, that always generally won, uh, is a big thing. It was so big in fact that I actually focused my entire education uh, throughout college and university, uh, graduating in game design so I could make a game just like these two studios are making, an old school FPS game uh, that could be good for esports. Uh, but I was never able to do it, as I was just one man. Uh, that was many years ago that I graduated, and now in 2017 it appears that we will have two games release, which are essentially just like the type of game I myself wanted to create. Now, first off, I want to say that everything in this video is just my opinion, and as usual I am a man of facts and I will tell you the information straight, but you need to remember that both of these games are in very early alpha stages uh, at the current time, so a lot is possible to change. A lot of stuff you will see is placeholders uh, and the information that I talk about now could change. I mean, I might not even be entirely correct in some areas uh, because I'm only going off what I know. Also, although I'm somewhat comparing these games uh, because essentially they are both trying to make a similar product, at this stage in time I feel it's kind of unfair to do so because at this moment uh, Days of War has shown a lot more content so therefore at this stage it seems like a more polished game. Uh, really this video is about theoretical ideas and information that I know um, and whether these studios create uh, and follow up on these ideas and how well they do it in the future is up to them. Uh, I'm just here to shed some light on both of these games and let you know about them uh, and their possibilities in the future if you weren't aware of them. So apologies for the long intro and let's get into it. Now everything I can show in this video is only stuff that has officially been released from the studios. Uh, so there's no new footage here uh, and I, maybe I should have made this a while ago but first we'll take a look at Battalion. I have been personally hyped for Battalion for some time. Uh, I've been in contact with them for quite a while and if you follow my social media you would have seen that they actually invited me to their studio to discuss about the game. Uh, they're basically using me to bounce ideas, uh, get feedback from. Uh, to make sure that the game is the best it can be in terms of playability uh, and ready for esports. It is usually a first impression if you look at this trailer that the gameplay seems very clunky and you would be right. Uh, but as far as I know the animations in this were just for the Kickstarter, they were just placeholders. Uh, and they've actually been working very hard to make the movement fluid uh, from the ground up. Now the guys behind the game uh, also like Days of War are all old school FPS players like myself. Both studios have the exact same reasoning behind making their game to go back to old school shooters uh, which require skill. The difference however is that Days of War seems like it has taken most of its inspiration from Day of Defeat uh, while Battalion has opted to take more from games like Call of Duty 1 and 2. Um, after talks of them at their studio they plan to essentially create an, a game uh, which has the visuals of a World War 2 shooter like COD 2 um, but the movement and mechanics of COD 4 Pro Mod. Uh, this for me is obviously great as it's actually pretty much like identical to the idea in the game that I wanted to create. Um, movement and how fluid and how good a game feels for me is the biggest thing in an FPS game. I should also mention that both games are using the same engine which is Unreal Engine 4. Uh, if they can recreate the movement to a degree in that engine it would be great. Uh, but I believe personally strafing will be hard to recreate due to it being a bug in the Quake engine. Uh, but we shall see. Moving on to really... I'll try and talk about like the base of the game uh, as best as I can. Uh, what it will have. I can try and go through some things that I deem as important points here. Uh, firstly maps. I haven't seen any maps from Battalion yet. Uh, although I do know that they're trying to create maps which as I said previously worked for competitive play, uh, designing them so that they have chokes and timings in place. I don't really know about the maps in this the Kickstarter video that you're watching now, maybe placeholders, uh, I don't know. Uh, so there's not really much more I can say on this subject, but I don't have any info on how the maps are at this stage. Um, they're obviously in development. Uh, it will have a server browser with dedicated servers like the old games, thank the lord. So yes, you can have your own servers. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they're planning to do it so you can make mods and custom maps as well in the future. 
Uh, I also believe that they're having a matchmaking system with ranks similar to that of CSGO. Uh, but not only having like a solo rank, uh, there will also be team pages uh, similar to that of League of Legends, uh, or as they put it themselves, like clan base, uh, where you will be able to create up to three teams and it will you know, be as an ELO system. Um, they also have general levels like in CS where you just get XP for playing casual games. Uh, these go up to level 100 and then they could be prestiged. This then ties into their war-torn system, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's basically like your character's outfit gets more worn and you know, like he's been in battle forever the longer you play the game. So he looks like a veteran, um, in which case mine will probably end up being naked. There is also gonna be more customization for your characters in terms of cosmetic unlocks. I believe some of this comes from crates that you get in game. Uh, these things don't affect the gameplay in any way. I think you can like engrave your name on your weapon or you can do like things with your weapons and characters and stuff. Moving on to some other points, you will be able to change the things that you expect in any game now, which you do not seem to have. Looking at you, Call of Duty, you shit. You will be able to change your FPS, your field of view, and all of the stuff that you expect. The game will also come with an anti-cheat. Uh, they will be using easy anti-cheat for this. And I believe this will be like shipped uh, and integrated with the game, so it's not like you'll have to like download the actual external program. In terms of eSports stuff, which for most of us is the most important factor, uh, as far as I know they have been in contact with ESL to sort out some stuff in the future when the game actually releases. Uh, whether this will happen I have no idea. Uh, I believe the game's main menu will be really good uh, for that type of stuff, similar to that of CSGO where they have like streams and tournaments and, and stuff like that displayed easily for people to see which is really good. So I think that's all I really need to talk about for Battalion. I assume this amount of information would give you a general idea of the direction that the game should be heading in in the future uh, and upon release what it should be like. So now we move on to the second game which is Days of War. Um, I'm not as familiar with this game as Battalion as I actually only found out about it yesterday which is kind of surprising to me. I don't know how I missed this game for so long um, but I have been doing quite a few hours research to try and get the most public information I can and I've also again been in contact with the developer today. Uh, so as I said before Days of War is pretty much like the counterpart to Battalion only in that it plays more like Day of Defeat rather than COD 2. Days of War started their development before Battalion. Uh, I believe it's been worked on for about two years now. I think the developers put money into the game and then also did a Kickstarter campaign to generate some more money. In terms of background information, uh, aspirations or reasons of making the game, they're pretty much identical between the two. Uh, Days of War is also trying to create an old school World War II shooter which is skillful. Uh, it requires aim and game sense. Back to basics. As I said earlier, due to the development being longer, uh, so far there is a lot more in terms of real gameplay to show compared to Battalion. Uh, so getting straight into it, I'll try and talk about the same kind of topics as Battalion. So first up we have the movement. I'm not entirely sure what to make of the movement uh, that I can see from the gameplay videos as I don't currently have a key to access the game at the time of this recording this video. Uh, I feel like it would be easier to judge by actually playing the game. But it does seem very fast paced at least, uh, maybe in my opinion too fast paced, like the players are running at too high of uh, amount of units without sprinting, so it looks kind of strange. Uh, I really don't want to comment too much on the movement at this time because I'd like to actually try it for myself before making a verdict on it, but there is something about the way the game plays uh, from these videos that looks somewhat strange to me. Uh, I can't entirely put my finger on it, uh, but I do remember when I was playing COD 2 many years ago, uh, I tried out Day of Defeat Source for a while and I didn't particularly like that game and how it played either. So I may somewhat be biased in the way that I perceive the game because of this. Um, although there is a possibility, but don't quote me on it, that the movement will be reworked in the future. Um, so I can't say too much on this topic, although it's one of the most important for me. Again, onto the section of maps. I haven't played them at this time, so I can't really comment on how well these would work in a competitive setting. Uh, I do believe some of the current alpha testers have played some 6v6 matches uh, but without actually trying the maps myself I can't say how good or bad the maps in this game are. Days of War I believe will also come with a server browser and especially modding tools. This is probably one of the biggest things I notice about this game uh, is the level editor and the modding potential. 
it's huge and as you can see in the video players will be able to create maps of ease uh, the developers of the game said that they believe the best competitive maps tend to come from the community and so they would like to turn the best maps into official maps. A uh, very similar concept to what Valve has with CSGO. Although I think what you're seeing on the screen right now is a different version of the mod tools that they have available. Uh, I'm pretty sure the main one is to do with the actual Unreal Engine 4 client and you can basically, uh, when you load the, the client up, you can open it in Unreal Editor and you will have the assets of the game with the backing code to make it all work. Fortunately, I somewhat understand this as of course I did game design at uni and we use the Unreal Engine. The modding thing that you see now is, I believe an early development thing that they worked on where you could create maps together, which I think looks incredible. Uh, but I think they said they haven't touched this version of the map editing since the announcement of the game uh, and may revisit it nearer the launch because it creates a lot of difficulty to perfect. In terms of competitive systems, uh, such as ranks and ladders, uh, and I quote, this is what was said to me in an email from one of the devs. Uh, they're focusing on making the game reliable and consistent first and want to have the core gameplay to be addictive with a high skill ceiling. In the future, there are a lot of directions that we can go in, like ranking systems, matchmaking, seasons and so on. Uh, we've also talked about having events. While all this stuff can have a huge impact on the competitive scene, we won't attempt it until we are totally happy with the foundation. So obviously this ties into the esports side of things as well. Um, it makes sense and I guess it just generally means that they are open to having a competitive side and esports side in the future. Uh, he also mentioned that in their eyes they don't get to choose if the game becomes an esport, uh, the community does. Uh, but they want to encourage it by making the game mechanics good. Other small points again include anti-cheat. Uh, I believe that Days of War is also going to be using easy anti-cheat in their game, the same as Battalion. And I, although I'm not 100% sure, I'm kind of confident that they will allow the change of FPS and field of view. In terms of player customization, I can't seem to find any info on that. So it either isn't planned at this moment in time or I've somehow missed it. Uh, I think that overall, this probably covers these two somewhat similar World War II shooters enough. Um, I hope this video has been at least slightly informative and I look forward to seeing how both of these games turn out next year. Uh, I might finally have a game I want to play in 2017. Do remember that everything I've shown here is very early access stuff and is bound to change. Uh, with Battalion we didn't actually see any gameplay from the actual game. Uh, so as I said at the start of the video, everything right now is ideas and pretty much theoretical. Please let me know what you think in the comments of the games and your thoughts as I'd like to know. Uh, and actually maybe even the devs will read them for feedback. I'll put all the information I can in the description including the games pages, uh, their videos and so on so you can do your own research if you want. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Generally it was a sponsored event by HP Omen which was being hosted by the company Gfinity. This had a prize pool of $25,000 and the problem with this event was that it had four invited teams and these were supposedly some of the best historic players from the original Call of Duty 4.